Lane is a Checkpoint at KTN News at Yvonne O'Quarrie. You can also get in touch with us on Facebook as well. The hashtag remains the same, Checkpoint. So over the last week, we saw um, the launch of the Jubilee, the NASA, Third Way Alliance as well, launch their manifesto. Tonight, we want to speak about that NASA manifesto. And we're joined tonight on the show uh, by David Ndee. Thank you very much, economist and a member of the NASA Technical Committee. Yes. Um, so we'll be having those discussions and you're free to ask your questions and make your comments tonight. So um, thank you very much, David, for making the time to be with us on Checkpoint tonight. Thank you for having me, Ivan. Yeah. Great. So let me start by just asking about um, you know, the manifesto and the day it was launched. We saw a number of documents that came out. Um, perhaps before we even begin to discuss uh, the manifesto itself, I think we saw about three documents. Maybe you could clarify um, you know, regarding which document we're supposed to be discussing tonight and which one is the NASA manifesto. Uh, that's that's fairly straightforward. You have a document called A Strong Nation, NASA Manifesto 2017. That's a NASA Manifesto. It's a, mostly a text document. Actually, it has no images. It's uh, just a text document. Because it's a bit of a policy document, it's mm -hmm. addressing serious policy audience. We have another document, same, but it's at the bottom abridged. Mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. Same colors, says strong nation, mm -hmm. abridged version. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you go through it, you will see it says it's the same things. Then there is another document which says implementing our manifesto, an implementation plan. Mm -hmm. Now that document looks a bit different in terms of outline mm -hmm. uh, because as you know, we are a coalition. And in a coalition, you have many groups. And even within parties, you have many groups. So that document was done by uh, a group which young people mm -hmm. who are trying to look at how they can uh, sort of land the ropes in terms of policy uh, process. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, they are on a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. So it has some things which look a bit out of okay. sync with the main document, uh -huh. but it is implementation. Right. And as you know, you, it's difficult to do to plan implementation uh, before you get into government. Okay. But uh, they felt they wanted to do something and we let them. All right, yeah. so um, that I think uh, sets it clear. So let's talk about, um, uh, you know, the NASA manifesto, um, you know, the one that says what, a strong, a strong, a nation. strong nation. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so it's been said out of the manifestos that have been launched, uh, you know, in this country, this is certainly not the first cycle we're having of manifestos, that one, they're all similar and that they're all modeled around Vision 2030, and that there really is no difference substantial between, for example, the NASA and the Jubilee Manifesto that would enable voters to make a very distinct choice between the two. Yes, I, I am here to unpack our manifesto for you and show you that that is not the case. In fact, I'm glad that uh, after the initial reactions, people saying that because they're used to saying it, I have seen some media coverage which is now saying that there are, these are two different ideological platforms. Um, now, uh, let me start by saying why we call our manifesto a strong nation. Uh, that in itself is a statement with, laded with meaning. Because we are saying we need a strong nation is our goal because we are a fragile nation. Okay? We are a fragile nation because we are going into elections <coughs> now and people are scared. We are scared whether we, it's going to be peaceful. Uh, I understand all the flights leaving the country around the election are full. So uh, we have done a lot of progress in terms of democratic progress. And for about four and a half years, we are a democracy which functions reasonably well. When we get to election time, all hell breaks loose. A lot of countries have, uh, have made that transition. Mm -hmm. So a free and fair, the electoral process is our final hurdle. And we might trip on that hurdle, either this election or the next one. So we are saying we need to deal with the fragility that causes us and how do, how, to be how, afraid of the election. And how does your document propose to make Kenya a stronger nation? Thank you. Now, in, uh, you have heard this uh, metaphor that Kwame Nkrumah said, seek ye first the political kingdom. And 
in Kenya, where we are tracing our, our, our challenge, is that Jomo Kenyatta said, seek ye first the economic kingdom. So we are saying the problem with our nation and why we are fragile is we put economics before politics. And we are saying political development is the foundation of a nation. That Mwali Munyerele got it right. He focused first on founding a cohesive mm -hmm. United Nation, inclusive nation. And now you can see, we said we wanted to rush ahead economically. But when you try and build an economy on uh, an unsound political foundation, uh, you're building on quicksand. So how do we do that then? Some now, specifics. if you look at our manifesto, yeah. the first, it has five pillars. Mm -hmm. The first one says nation building. The second one says state building. The third one says governance transformation. The fourth one says realizing socioeconomic rights. And the fifth one says uh, economy. It talks about uh, employment or whatever. So we do not get to where, to the pri what the Jubilee Manifesto makes its top priority mm -hmm. until the fourth pillar. So our first, you see the three pillars of our manifesto are governance, and politics, they are about building an inclusive polity. We have also stated, if you read the forward of our manifesto, mm -hmm. we have said that our platform, you don't need to invent a platform. Our platform is to implement our constitution. Because we wrote this constitution when we realized, after the 2007 election, that we are indeed a politically fragile nation. There are many people who did not think that we needed a new constitution. Okay, so let me ask, the ideological differences, um, and perhaps from, for Kenyans who, you know, think from a very simple point of view, which is, you know, when you think about differences in ideology, capitalism versus socialism, and these are just some of uh, those big ones out there, but what is ideologically different um, between your manifesto and Jubilees, because it's talking about nationhood, if you remember the 2013 one, which they're building on now with the 2017 one, talking about unity, um, talking about Uchumi, uh, these are some of the things me, that they're building up on. So what is that thing let, that is significantly different? Let me capture different? it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of months ago, the president went to Narok. And a clergyman said that uh, he thinks that uh, we should emphasize unity before development. And the president snarled at him. And he sort of called him names and he threw a diatribe. That's his ideology. He said, if we wait for unity, when are we going to develop? So that represents the ideology that we have pursued since independence of putting, thinking we are putting the economy first without focusing on the political foundation of building a nation. The most important thing for a people is human dignity, not material progress. There was a survey the other day I saw covered by a newspaper, I think, yes, it's a newspaper, and it said that Kenyans had been interviewed and uh, poor Kenyans were happier than wealthier ones. Mm -hmm. Money doesn't buy you happiness. So, okay? So we can go to the fundamental values. What is a nation about? A nation is about people, human dignity, and it's about people feeling valued. We, have a, we are in a nation where a lot of people feel excluded and not valued. So that's the first uh, fundamental difference. So can we talk about what is it that will make Kenyans feel? That, uh, yeah, if and, you recall, and, and, and what is that? Because I know your document talks about it, you know, from the overarching uh, point of view. Some might say perhaps philosophical, which, let, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But then, so what is that one thing that the NASA government would do that would, we would say, I'll okay. I'll come to the economic. Yeah. I'll come to the social economic. Yeah, yeah. If you go back to 2003, mm -hmm. NAC, Yote mm -hmm. What was Yote Awezekana? Kenya, Kenyans were rated the most optimistic mm -hmm. people in the world. Yeah. They were optimistic because we thought we had slain the beast of tribalism. The thing which bothers Kenyans most is that is tribalism, particularly as it leads to political exclusion. And how would uh, NASA hope to that, solve that? Well, the, our constitution has uh -huh. seven chapters. If you take our constitution, it has 18 chapters. The first seven chapters talk about becoming 
Kenyans. How, did, we don't talk about government mm -hmm. and economy and finance until chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1 to 7. The things in chapter 1 to 7, culture, language, all those things, nobody has bothered to implement it. Because we think about only, if you look at Jubilee, which was not very strongly for this constitution, their preoccupation is material things. More hardware, more roads, more infrastructure, but not the people side of, of, of things. For instance, one of the things that the constitution requires is that we promote our own languages. Mm -hmm. We have stated that we are going to promote the teaching of an academic study of all our Kenyan languages from school to university. It's not an expensive thing, but we are going to try and save some of our languages which are disappearing like El Molo mm -hmm. and Ilchamos mm -hmm. and others. We are going to transform KBC so that it becomes a national broadcaster given a strong mandate to promote, to promote multiculturalism and our multiple languages and, and cultures. We have talked about unleashing the power of culture, both for national unity mm -hmm. and in the creative economy. Uh -huh. uh, so we're saying that we have to invest institutional resources and political capital as well as money. Okay. All right. Um, can we talk some specifics now? And um, because you are an economist and yeah. you have spoken um, quite greatly about a number of things that have been taking place uh, in the country and having been, uh, you know, very central in... in the creation of the NASA manifesto, um, I'd like to speak about, you know, some of the things that um, are happening in the country right now. SGR is one. Uh, you are on record, David, as saying it's not value for money. In fact, you said uh, many people seem to be under the impression that it is otherwise a good investment. It is not. Um, so if NASA were to win the election in August, um, it would no doubt inherit this project. Flaws and all, um, overpricing and, and, and all of the issues, including um, what some would consider the achievements. What would NASA's strategy be considering phase two is already um, in progress? This is definitely something that NASA would have to deal with. We'll, ca we'll cross that bridge when you come to it. I want to point out that uh, this, is, this project has costed 6% of GDP. Mm -hmm. So far, I have not come across any project in the world that has costed 6% of GDP of any country. If we, the money which is being spent, mm -hmm. we're talking about, which is going to reach $10 billion. If we spend $10 billion, one project will account for half of our foreign debt. Okay? There's no company which invests business which puts that much resources in one project in terms of risk, your risk management and everything. Mm -hmm. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, but David, certainly you can't say you will cross that bridge when you get to it. That bridge is 36 days from it today. It doesn't matter. Surely NASA has thought about what you're going to do with the project. We're already we, paying we for it. We don't have enough information. There is very little disclosure about many things. Okay. But I'll you give have an example. Quite a little bit I'll give about you, I, I, base you, I, mean, my, yes. I base it on analysis of yeah. the little public information uh -huh. and what I'm able to decipher. But uh -huh. I'll give you some information I got recently. Uh -huh. You are told that this railway has a capacity of, we would get a railway with a capacity of 22 million tons. Okay? The operational capacity is only 9 million tons. Mm -hmm. The cargo going, transit cargo to Uganda is already close to 9 million tons. That for me tells me two, one thing that this railway cannot carry transit cargo and local cargo at the same time. So would you be seeking to increase its no, operational no, capacity? You cannot would reach, you consider look, um, abandoning phase let me two? Tell you, What's what you that don't going do, to be like? You're going to have do, to make a decision. What you, you don't make decisions. You do rigorous technical appraisal. The reason why we are in this problem is because Jubilee dispensed with rigorous technical appraisal. I am not a railway expert. Okay, I can ask economic questions. If we said we are building a railway to take cargo to Uganda and, and take trucks off our road, and we have a railway that can only do one or the other, okay, what is the, which, the report I have read from government, mm -hmm. from Kipra, and there's some debate between them and the railway, mm -hmm. where the railway people are trying to push that, no, they accept that this will be able to carry 20 million tons. See, you can't run that many trains on a single track railway. So there are lots of technical things. Okay? So that you say you will cross Because when you, you get need there. to get all the, you know, the okay. financing arrangements have never been disclosed. All right. So 
you will cross that bridge when you get there. However, here's another promise that uh, NASA has made, and this is not about crossing that bridge. In fact, it's extremely definite. NASA has promised to provide free secondary education by September this year, just a month after the election. How possible is this, considering we are just now into the second day of the financial year 2017-2018? The budgetary allocations have already been done to the education sector, and many asking, is this big bang, and will we end up the same way we were with the free primary education where we had quantity in terms of enrollment, but quality went down. What are some of those things that NASA is so confident about that in let September me, let me start, we'll have free secondary education? Let me start by maintaining, making one point. If you start making quality quantity trade-offs in education, mm -hmm. you are saying some kids should get good education and others should stay out of school. It could perhaps be a phase. No, 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 it could no, be no, a phase no, no, let me one. finish. You do not say that uh, some kids who get quality education, if others are away of, out of school. Mm -hmm. So first get all the kids in school and they get the same quality of education. That is justice. Okay. Now, we have said very clearly, if you read our manifesto, that we have achieved, we, are, we, are, we put on the education under social and economic rights, mm -hmm. which are there in the constitution. One of them is the right to education. Mm -hmm. The right to education says you should have free primary education, progressive realization of universal secondary education, mm -hmm. and equitable access to tertiary education. Because of the NAC program, we have achieved uh, free, uh, universal primary, free primary education. Yeah. You improve quality as you go along. Yeah. Two, we have at 50% transition from primary to secondary. Mm -hmm. But even with that transition, the attrition rate is very high. So of the ones which enroll, mm -hmm. about almost, almost a quarter don't finish secondary school. So one of the ways to uh, begin to realize that is you must arrest the attrition. Okay? And, you, and the reason why they drop out, it's fees, it's cost. Okay, so that's the first entry point. Then we have said, once we do that, we will increase progressively the number of places, Form 1 places, so that they match the number of kids who are leaving primary school. So our goal is then to achieve 100% transition uh -huh. in five years. But initially, we arrest attrition okay. in secondary school. So now, how are we going to do it? Yeah. Uh, I do my math. I did this manifesto. Mm -hmm. I know it's, fine. Fis it's fiscally sustainable. Right. If you look at our data, uh, any fiscal data, our, our absorption of grants is very low. We get pledges from donors for grants. We don't absorb them. The amount of grant aid we do not absorb is enough to finance the free secondary education. Okay, so what is that that you're going to propose to do um, by September that makes this possible? Um, and the reason I ask this is because um, the secondary schools as they are now don't have enough space to take in everybody. And once you make the announcement, uh, David, that you know secondary school education is now free, you will get 100% perhaps transition. You will get the people who are um, dropped out of high school, who want to come back in, who never made it to high school because of school fees. Um, and, you know, we've taking a look at some of the research and some of um, those numbers in terms of uh, the schools and the number of dormitories that are required we, um, and all of that. So when you say by September it's free, me, what is that that's state, going to enable state, everybody to, to come you, in? This to you. Yeah. Our goal is to transition to full day secondary schooling system. So no boarding schools? Absolutely. Why not? Not now. Because it doesn't make sense. you got you, you will not be able to have... Uh, it. That is a system of coronial inheritance. Okay, but David... Which undermines... Let me be clear. Yeah, David, but specifically my question was how you're going to ensure that you are able we, to take in everybody we, by we, September. We will transition. Look, there is no... Justice delayed is justice denied. Uh, if you sit there and start saying, oh, you're going to plan a first system so that kids who are missing out school go to school, that's not the way to do it. Uh, it is our only big pledge which has financial implications. Everything else we proposed is budget neutral. What does that mean? That it has no for, for major Kenyans budget who are, who are not, it has no major it budget implications. So where will these students sit? Ex, no, no, no. Will they I sit under trees the only, and, no. and that's fine. Did you hear I me? Mean, that you let, say me that. let me say what I said. Yeah. It is the only major thing which has, which has major budget implications. All we have been very careful to have only one big thing. Okay? 
So that's why we will dedicate all our efforts. And that's what I'm asking. What we, are some of those efforts? Well, Where are you going to start? You'll have them come into school. Look, are look, you building have, schools? Are you building labs? Are, not, are you listen, building dormitories? I, thought, I don't think you heard me. This is third term. There are no new enrollment. They will certainly come in. No, new enrollment is in January. Okay, so in January, months. okay, so in those three months, what are you going we'll to do? We'll be ready. Yeah, yeah. how don't are you going worry. to get ready? We are planning. Yeah, but we you see, you can't say don't be ready no. when you launch a manifesto. No. Kenyans would like to know no, 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 exactly no. how you're going you to do that. Manifestos are statements of intent. And we want to know what that intent will There's be time. and how it will be. There's time. How much time, David? Six, three to four months. I've done policy for 25 years. I know ago. you have, David, but so there's also a I lot of Kenyans who have not necessarily well, done economics yeah, yeah, and but policy I'm not for going 25 to sit years. Here in the TV program. But they probably want to know how well, it's going to be done. Well, they will have to wait. You cannot. So the Kenyans will have to wait no, to no, see how it happens. We have said we will do it. Uh -huh. We will do it. If we don't do it, we will pay a huge political price for it. Okay, that sounds a little bit like the promises that Jubilee makes it's and everybody right. says, um, you know, that we, we will said, do it when we will do it. We have said, I said, do, how will we finance? Do you not finance? think the Kenyans no. want to know the finer details of how you're going to finance finer it? Finer details are worked out. One of the things you do not do, and that's the Jubilee habits people have acquired, is proclamations of making complex policy things sound simple. Isn't that you, what Kenyans want to you, do? They want to understand yes, it from a simple point of view. that's not the way I do things. Well, Kenyans we perhaps things. have a well, different way. Well, they need to learn how they're done properly. You set up a task force of experts, uh -huh. and they are working. And those task force of experts look at how something will be implemented. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're getting to government, and you're talking about September, believe you me, they will be finished. Okay, so they will have to wait and see. Is that yeah, the NASA people style? People are working on it. People are working no, on it. No, that's the way you do policy work. It is done by experts sitting away from the public glare. You are one that's expert. What they, that's why we work. Yeah, and that's we why work. we have you here, perhaps, to TV. explain some of those. We don't work on TV. Well, but Kenyans want to hear from you. Well, those are the things We're that not I asking said, you to work details. on TV, David. We're just those asking for some details. But I've explained. Let's talk about corruption. Eurobond was a big conversation over the last few years. Um, you publicly discussed your misgivings with how that money was used. We are paying back for this. What would be... Um, your proposal to, to sort this out. It's now a debt that we've got. Um, I'd just like to hear what your thoughts are on that. You said, in short, the IMF cooks the books one way and the Treasury cooks them the other. This was you know, part of the wider conversation on corruption, which we'll get to in just a minute. Um, but just specifically on Eurobond, how would you propose uh, you know, to deal with this issue um, once NASA comes to power, we, if it does in we, 36 days? We will talk to the Auditor General. Uh -huh. He's been working on it. Uh, he was given. A, he was tasked by Parliament. Mm -hmm. Tal Parliament has prolonged. Uh, in a sense, it's water under the bridge, because we don't think that the money is there. So, but the debt is there. So you have to talk about it in the broader context of debt, and what's happening into our indebtedness. So how do we deal with the debt problem? And I've said three things, and it's you know, uh, how do you do that? One, you stop digging. Okay, so you have to contain the debt. Two, you restructure it, because you've been taking short-term, expensive commercial debt. Mm -hmm. So you restructure it. You try and move more towards long-term debt, mm -hmm. uh, shift back towards uh, soft loans instead of commercial loans. Uh, and three, we will have to grow out of it. Yeah? We have to find growth uh, sources which have got big bang for buck, so that we uh, have growth of the productive economy. And if you read our manifesto, we have said that very clearly. What are our priorities? Our main priority in the short term, we have said, is agriculture. Mm -hmm. Because agriculture can grow very quickly if, with very little resources. Why? Unlike investment, you have to build a plant or you have to do the investment. It takes you a year or two. Then it has to start producing, bang, bang, bang. But farms are there. Mm -hmm. Farmers are there. What they need is very little inputs because and we have a lot of farmers with very low productivity we can get that going in six months mm -hmm. okay so that's how you do it you sequence your planning you start with the things which can get going very quickly and then you pick up the things which will take time but we have to grow the productive economy mm -hmm. jubilee has been growing economy through public infrastructure using debt mm -hmm. we have to stop that model 
and go back to production. Okay. You do not hear Jubilee talking about production. It talks about infrastructure, it talks about public works. Mm -hmm. So we're shifting away from public works and infrastructure. We're saying we are, our infrastructure development is going to be aligned to the sectors and the whatever else which we raise productivity and output very quickly. Okay. Um, as uh, we close, and um, I want to ask my final question to you, um, the war on corruption in general, what would the war on graft look like under NASA leadership? Um, that famous saying that, you know, everybody quotes the president as saying, Munataka Nifanya Nini, he claims he's done everything he can within the limits of the Constitution and says it is up to uh, the independent bodies that are tasked with this, the EACC, uh, the DPP, the judiciary. Um, so what would be significantly different with the war on graft under a NASA leadership? Corruption is a multidimensional animal. It's a moral, ethical issue at the societal level. It is a purely ethical issue at the organizational level. And there is a criminal justice dimension when it is a crime. There are many corrupt things which are not crimes. What we have done in Kenya is externalize all corruption to crimes so that we avoid taking moral ethical responsibility as people. So it's not my job to be upright. It is the job of the anti-corruption people and all sorts of people to catch those people who are corrupt. But the people who are saying that are doing corrupt transactions every day. And how do you instill that sense of... So you don't instill. You start by taking your own moral personal responsibility. You do not do it to other, for other people. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is the first thing we have to do as NASA if we are to fight corruption is to practice what we preach. And we have said that the fundamental problem of the corruption that's bothering us is its mother is impunity. Mm -hmm. And impunity is where the people at the top protect the corrupt. So one of the things that we are asking Kenyans to hold our feet to the fire is we have said we will not protect corrupt people amongst us because we are not going to fight the corruption in Uganda. Mm -hmm. You fight the corruption which the people you are with are doing. Let's, let's be realistic. Eh? Right. So this thing of externalizing, eh? what so, you do so is first would, you take responsibility. Would, okay, it would start from the top. Some would say... You start with us. Okay. Um, does NASA have uh, the moral authority to stand on a high pedestal and say this is something we're going to do? Some of the principles uh, within NASA have been adversely mentioned, perhaps not charged uh, in a court of law, but some of them have been adversely mentioned in some rather serious scandals in the country. So would Raila Odinga perhaps start an investigation into his principles to begin with as a sign of good faith? You know, if you start uh, pointing fingers in Kenya about corruption, eh? you're never going to do anything. Because I said, we accept, we have accepted corruption is a societal problem. It's not on this side or the other. We have said it, we have called it a cancer which is you know, eating our society. So there are no moral pedestals. If you have any political formation in Kenya of significance, yeah, people with a corruption history will join it. Okay? So this uh, moralizing is a complete waste of time. But isn't that the let same thing say, you just said, David, let us that you will lead from the top? Don't personalize. We're saying, I, we're saying well, isn't carefully. it an issue of impunity when you say that some people get away with it, particularly no, those at the top? We're saying um, so what happens to the people that have been corruption, mentioned corruption, within NASA? A huge part of the problem is socio, high social tolerance for corruption. And will that, to that, so that tolerance will not be um, allowed now, within NASA? Now we're saying, if I'll tell you, you, in Kenya and in corruption, you don't speak for other people. You speak for yourself. Okay? We have stated a policy statement, it's mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. that we, we, we have a code of conduct. Mm -hmm. And we have set the bar in that code of conduct higher than the law does. Now, it is the duty of society to hold us to account on that code of but conduct. But surely it should also start from a personal level, I'm sitting, not just for yourself, but I for all the speak, leaders within NASA. Ask, ask them. So you're not speaking here for NASA? I cannot speak for individuals. In okay. corruption in Kenya, uh -huh. you speak for, for yourself. yourself. Okay. Your final words as, as we close our conversation on why fundamentally, if you can, in 30 seconds to a minute, why fundamentally the NASA manifesto is the one that Kenyans should vote for? 
If you read the part on our National Manifesto where we talk about the economy, we juxtapose our platform and our ideology with the, what we call the status quo. And we call the status quo the trickle-down economy. This is the belief that it is rich people who create wealth and it trickles down to the rest of us. And we have said that is not true. It is ordinary Kenyans who generate wealth, which is collected by government through taxes, and they channel those resources to the economy of wealthy people. So, and then we are made to sit down here with a bowl, waiting for that wealth to trickle down. And we have said that's the paradigm we are changing. We have said we are removing that bowl, and we are giving every Kenyan a ladder. We are building, going to have an economy where we build prosperity from below. That's the fundamental difference. So bottom the, up and not bottom top up, down. Bottom up, not top down. If okay. you read everything in our manifesto, from governance all the way to economy, that's, that's is the overarching bottom up. Theme, bottom up. In Jubilee, we are saying, and check it, uh -huh. it's top down. These okay. are the people who speak the language of some people who bake the cake and, and some others people who to eat. eat it. And we are saying okay. there is no such thing. All right. So we're all baking the cake. We are all baking the cake. And then we will all eat it together. And we must include, and the, the more people we include, if you look at the businesses. The bigger the cake. Sorry, we're out of time. Thank so you I'm very rushing much, you yeah. a little bit. David Ndee, who's an economist and a member of the NASA Technical Committee on the NASA Manifesto. That's been our discussion tonight. Please continue to keep uh, your views coming in. The hashtag is Checkpoint at KT News at Yvonne Okwara. We're taking a break. We're back with the day sports news and my take is also coming up see you after the break thank you David.